Hey folks and welcome. We're coming to you right now from Las Vegas here in Caesars Palace and today with me I am I'm interviewing some amazing folks here from Heap and uh, and we're going to be talking all about how Heap uses Snowflake. We're going to be learning about what they do, uh, some of their architecture and uh, and having fun here in Vegas today. So how are you today? Doing well. Awesome. So so for everybody here watching, tell me exactly in your own words, what does Heap do um, and, and what makes you different? Yeah, of course. Well, at a very high level, Heap is what we call a digital insights platform. In layman's terms, that means that we provide product and web analytics for our customers, which means, hey, we can help you collect clickstream data, that is clicks, taps, swipes, gestures from your digital products, apps, websites, digital storefronts, we enable our customers to better understand their customers. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, uh, you know, here in Vegas, have you been able to to, to talk to uh, you know a lot of customers yet about you know what Heap does? And um, tell me about your experience so far here in Vegas. Yeah, well, it is day one, but we're just getting started here. And I think this is actually my second in-person Snowflake Summit, third overall. I've been sponsoring this since 2019, and you know we are both a Heap, uh, sorry, a Snowflake customer and partner. So for me, it's really about hey, how can, how can we get in front of our current customers today? meeting ones who are going to be evangelists for our product. Most importantly, meeting the future ones as well, right? People who are going to become both, you know, purchasers of Heap and Snowflake and finding business value from it. That's awesome. So, so Heap really seems like something that can really leverage the power of Snowflake. Tell me more about kind of the history of Heap. When was it founded? How large is it today? Uh, things like that. Yeah, of course. So we came out of Y Combinator in 2013. And the quick, let's say, 30-second synopsis behind our founding is our founder, Mateen Movaset, was a PM at Facebook on the Facebook chat product. You probably have used Facebook chat before. If not, you probably should have. Absolutely. Um, and at the time, the main problem he had was every time he wanted to get information about his users, how they're using the product, new releases, new features, how adoption was looking, um, it would take potentially weeks or months to get behavioral data about their customers. And you think at Facebook scale, they have the best engineering team in the world, which they may do, as well as easy access to data to understand their users. And the problem was, at the time, and all other solutions as well, both internally built like at Facebook and other solutions as well, in order to get data about your users or tracking code put in, you had to basically have an engineer write a snippet of tracking code for every single event you want to capture. Things like click add to cart, start free trial, submit a chat, that's all snippets of code. I mean, Teams Foundation was, if I'm having this much trouble at Facebook, there must be hundreds, if not thousands of other PMs out there who are having the same problem as me. So what he did was he left Facebook to build the exact company he wished he had or tool he wished he had at Facebook to power himself as a product manager or analyst to understand his users. So it's, that's a pretty cool origin story. One, I mean, it makes a lot of sense being uh, product focused, you know, uh, for learning from this firsthand and being able to solve a problem that he's experienced himself. So that, that's pretty cool to see. Um, and coming out of YC, that's that's huge. So that's that's really cool. Um, you know, tell me a little bit about your architecture, right? So a lot of times people are, are, are more and more learning about the differences between Snowflake connected apps and Snowflake uh, and, and a managed application. Can you tell me what type of architecture is Heap today and how do you work with your customers and their data? Yeah, of course. And for that, I'll zoom out a bit to kind of give the end to end story from data capture all the way to data landing in the warehouse, that being Snowflake. So, you know, on the top of the funnel, right, you install Heap on the web page itself or via an SDK on mobile. We support iOS, React Native, and Android as well. And once you install us on any tool or application, um, we begin to actually auto capture every single event or interaction. Your, your customers or users do. Think of us as like a large data vacuum, right? And you know, from there, data flows into Heap into our internal backend servers. And we give our customers or our users tools to basically define events retroactively. That means that if I installed Heap, let's say on snowflake.com uh, six months ago, I didn't touch it, and six months later, that's today, I define an event that could be something like submit free trial for Snowflake, for example. You're now gonna have six months of historical, of historical data to work with, automatically without talking to your friends in engineering to write tracking code. So first part is data capture up, upstream or upstream and then define an event and then from there, if you wanted to get your clickstream production data in Snowflake, um, we work off data sharing. So for folks who aren't familiar with data sharing, this allows us to basically manage a large internal Snowflake warehouse internally, our data lake, and we'll push our customers 
clickstream data into the Snowflake on our end and share it from our account to their account in a very elegant, seamless solution. All we have to do, or all a customer has to do, is go into the Heap UI, put in their Snowflake account URL, click share, we plop out a small SQL query which says, accept the share on your end, and automatically, you'll now see your Heap data as secure views in Snowflake. It's that easy. That's, that is pretty powerful. Um, so you mentioned data sharing, right? That's one of my, in my opinion, that's probably one of the most differentiating factors that Snowflake provides out of the box. It's amazing. Can you talk to me more about why, why did you choose Snowflake to build Heap on top of, right? I mean, the, yeah, t tell me more about that. To be honest, I think it was some customer, de customer demand, right? You know, we saw, you know, today we have about 1,200, 1,300 paying customers, um, and half of them use what we call Heap Connect, that being getting data out of Heap into a tool like Snowflake. And at the time, this was 2017, 2018, we saw the demand for Snowflake just going up and up and up like a rocket ship, right? So um, there's no magic behind it, it was just the market is telling us this, if we don't build it this way and support data into Snowflake, um, it's a potential big market opportunity to miss for us. So the story is just, hey, the market's going that way, customer demand for it, and at the, at the, at the exact time we're looking to build is when the data sharing product architecture came out. So it was very serendipitous, to be honest. It was, we knew how to do it, and when talking to our rep at the time, um, great rep, his name is Jordan Vandenberg, shout out to him. Um, he introduced to us the data sharing, and that's how we did it. That's awesome, that's awesome. So uh, what's next for Heap? You know, where, where are you going from here? Um, you know, six months, one year down the road, um, what should customers get excited about? Yeah, so actually this has been a pretty big, let's say month and a half for Heap, to be honest, right? We actually did a full rebranding, we moved from a dark purple to a dark blue with white and green. Pretty cool, to be honest. Been here for five years, seen it all. But most importantly, we acquired a company about uh, a week ago. That was a big announcement from us uh, uh, about a week and a half ago. And this company is called Auric. They do session replay. So basically enable our customers now to not only capture clickstream data about the customers, but actually rebuild the exact thing they're doing in the user interface. So not only looking at quantitative data in Heap, but now combining qualitative user experiences across the board. So pinpoint a point in the journey where folks are getting stuck with quantitative data and actually be able to pinpoint in a user session visually where they're getting stuck, where there's friction or what's happening. So with this acquisition of Auric, um, we can now combine quantitative insights, which has been heaped for since day zero with a qualitative piece, which enables them to see both the what as well as hopefully the why people are getting stuck or purchasing something on your application or website or e-commerce store. Oh, that's that's interesting. So combining qualitative with quantitative, how are you how are you you know merging those two together? So like you know when you have some quantitative data, how do you how do you associate that qualitative data with that piece? Yeah, quantitative data. So if you've seen our press release, you probably read this, but I'll give you the the spiel here because yeah. we're we're here, right? So um, you know one of the main ways people look at data in terms of product flows is via funnel, right? Funnel being step one, step two, step three and where folks drop off, right? If you've seen a funnel, you've seen them all. I'm not too crazy, right? Um, but most importantly, what you want to begin to understand as a PM or an analyst or marketer is, when do folks drop off? Not only are they dropping off, most importantly, why? So with the, uh, with the acquisition, what we can begin to do is begin to say, because everything is timestamped, so we can say, okay, between steps two and three, which may be adding an item to a cart and checking out, or completing a product flow, for example, you can now tell Heap, show me people who dropped off between steps two and three, show me the, the, the sessions of where they dropped off. And they'll basically give you a list of sessions or really video recordings of you know, exactly at the point in time they begin to drop off. So as a designer or a PM or analyst, um, you not only look at the data as rows and tables in Snowflake, for example, but you actually see a visual recreation of the exact moment in your app or retail store or digital product where people are having points of friction or getting stuck because of some reason. That's, that's pretty incredible. Um, and really exciting. I, I, you know, really makes me want to want to check it out, uh, in, you know, in person and 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 see it. Um, but uh, but yeah. So what? Where are you gonna go uh, from here? Uh, here in Vegas. You know, what's what's your plan here over the next couple of days? Well, it's only day one. We got three three and a half more days here. Um, it's actually my fourth time in Vegas in the past two years. So somewhat of a frequent flyer here. Um, I think for me, it's meeting more customers. Most importantly for me, meeting partners as well. Uh, both other, other technology vendors as well as SIs, services partners, agencies, consultancies who can support our customers pre and post sale. So for me, of course, love meeting current Heap evangelists. Most importantly, want to find the next generation of Heap users. Awesome. And for all of our viewers here today, 
where should they go to learn more about you and about Heap? Yeah, so two things. If you're at Snowflake Summit, go to booth 2122 right around the corner. Um, most importantly, uh, heap.io. That's H-E-A-P.io. And you can either email me at uh, Zach, Z-A-C, at heap.io, and I'll help you out. Awesome, folks. And I'm Daniel Myers, Developer Relations here at Snowflake. And, you know, we're coming at you here live in Vegas uh, here at Caesars Palace. See you guys next time.